Hey YouTube, what is going on? It is Jax here, back with another video, and today I have an exciting video. So a lot of you guys have probably noticed I've not been as high as usual for the past couple of months. Like, I've only been top 100 a couple of times, which I know, subtle flex, I'm sorry, but that's not usually normal for me. But at the end of last season, I finally turned it around. I was able to push up to 8,400 trophies. I ended up tilting a bit, which uh, brought me down to a 348 finish. But if we look at the global leaderboards, at my season highest, I secured a... Let me scroll real quick. I secured a top 184 finish, which would have been the top 200 finish I've been searching for for so long. So... Yeah, today we're going to go over the replays that got me to 8,400 right around here. I've got the rest of them saved, and then I lost like seven or eight in a row. So we'll go over the first loss. I won't show you the rest of the losses, but I ended up losing quite a bit to some really bad matchups, 2.6 Expo, Log Bait, and then Hog EQ, like the kind of the basic cycle of bad matchups here. So we've got four replays. We've got one against Huge, one against Decade, aka Shuko, who is one of the best P.E.K.K.A. players in the world. We've got one against Mikan Buya, and we have the loss against Win. So, let's go into the one against Huge here first. So, this guy, like most people when they look at this matchup would probably say, this is a pretty bad matchup for P.E.K.K.A. honestly. And at first, I would agree with you, but I've played this guy twice, and I've just found out he is such a bad cycle, it's impossible for him to defend. So, a little bit of top ladder bias here. I do know what he's running right off the bat, so I can tell that when he's bleeding here, he's got barbarians in hand. And so I cheese him, and I go for the prediction fireball right off the bat. Not very fair to him, so I, I go in for a magic archer here. This kind of evens it out, though, because that magic archer is going to get, like, two shots of damage, and then basically just get on the tower for a little bit. He's going to have to minor it, but it was not a good magic archer. Um, however, he doesn't have his barb, so he can't punish me. So I do know that he does have the Inferno Dragon, so I need to be careful about using the P.E.K.K.A. And you're going to see, I'm never really going to use my P.E.K.K.A. this match. I think I may use it once, maybe. Um, so he goes for a Barbarian to counter the Bandit, and he cycles really quick, so he does have his Barbarians back in hand, and that's why I go for the Royal Ghost, because now we can force out the Barbarians from him, and that's going to be really solid. So I'm bleeding a bit of Elixir here. I just want to be able to kite the bars with my Battle Ram. And now, this is, this is one of the plays... Where, because I know his deck, and because of that first sequence, I now know his cycle. I know he's got minions, and that's going to be his best answer. Look at his hand. He doesn't want to put an Inferno Dragon on that. I zap, and that Battle Realm's on the tower. He's going to put minions, so I go for an Ewas off to the side. Zap that very quickly. See, he goes for the Fireball onto my Ewas. Now he doesn't have any Elixir, and that Battle Realm connects. And look at this Ewas going to town on the Barbs, because he couldn't finish off the Ewas. Um... We get half of his tower right there, just knowing his cycle. And I think that was one of the best plays that I did in this match. Um, everything else is just, well, like, I just play well. I don't actually, I don't have to do anything special. That's what happens when you have matchup. He's going to have to do something crazy to go ahead and beat me. And he, if he can't do that, well, that's too bad for him. I just win because I queued into the game at the same time. So I go, yeah, he's king laughing. I was muted the whole time. I was full concentration. Like, I was just listening to music and not doing anything else. So I know he doesn't have fireball still. That's why I was able to play the magic archer. Magic archer just goes to town on those minions he goes in for a minor and yeah he's basically just having to continue to use answers that he doesn't want to use i go for a bandida on this um bar barrel and he's gonna have to barbarians a bandit now now look at his cycle it's getting even worse so i go in for the magic archer we're not gonna give him any tower value we do give it on the other lane but honestly i like the, i just wanted to play it opposite lane so we go for the battle room because i don't want to play into the inferno dragon but if he keeps having to spend, then my ghost is going to have to be ignored. So he has to go in for a minor, and now the ghost is on the tower. One hit, two hits. Now his tower is down to 1237. I go for an Ewis cycled in the back. He's going to have to fireball that to kill the Ewis, and now I can go for a bandit, and I have my magic archer back. Look at that. Look at how it works. He can't fireball both, and he needs to because both of my units are going to get a lot of value. So knowing he has nothing or to kill the magic archer, he's going to have to zap it, and then he's going in for the miner, and he has to put the miner on the battle ram, because the barbs are going to take his tower. So now he can finally barbarrel the ba magic archer, but I kill it with the bandit, and now I've got another magic archer. This is absolutely insane. Like This is how this matchup should be played. This is just phenomenal, and this is how like you guys can play this these kinds of matchups in mid ladder. Like, if you can start learning how to count cycles, learn how to count elixir. I'm not really counting elixir very much in that match. I do know, like some basic ideas um 
But I'm just going to bleed here, by the way, because I don't want to make a play into that Inferno Dragon now. And I didn't have a great support for the Magic Archer. And, like, honestly, I didn't. I was just thinking in my head, dude, I'm literally smashing him right now. Like, there's nothing he can do. Why get risky with it? So, again, Ghost, Battle Arm, straight into the Barbarians. And, uh, like, or it's not straight into the Barbarians. I try and pre Fireball. We do get the Miner, but the Magic Archer is there. He can't Barbs and kill the Magic Archer. He's got a Barbs. So we get more chip damage, and the Magic Archer is right there, going to go ahead and kill off those Barbs. So I just go for the Ewas here. Uh, Ewas is going to help the Magic Archer kill the minions, and the Magic Archer gets a shot on the tower. Two shots on the tower, we're back to Fireball, and we win. So, beautiful game. No P.E.K.K.A., no R.G. there. Just absolute domination, just knowing his cycle and knowing how Elixir works, and like he can't Fireball both. So I was, I was saying... You guys can play like this if your opponent has like a billion answers to your stuff, but they just don't have enough to answer everything they need to answer, then you can go ahead and just win the game by abusing that fact. So, our next replay here is against Decade. So, Decade is uh, better known, well, not better known, but his name is Shuko. Um, you guys should definitely go give him a follow on Twitter. I think his name is like Shuko0423. Don't quote me on that. Some of the Japanese players have some interesting names. So, he gives me the hog thanking. Um, and so I go for a bandit and he's going to peck at the back. That sucks. Look at this. My peck is seventh card in hand. That's absolutely crippling in a mirror matchup, honestly. So we're just going to go for the ghost and I could have pecked early to get it down, but I need want to counter the battle ram first. So I just go for the battle ram or the ghost. And one of the plays that I like to do with the ghost when it's a, there's a battle ram is let the battle ram connect and just have the ghost kill off all the barbs. So he's going to go for high minions. And this was a mistake on my end. I should not have e was because he's just going to eat the ghost. And now look at where I am in cycle. Like, I'm very low. And the ghost, beautifully played there. Pekka does not get any value. Doesn't hit the tower. Doesn't hit the e was Doesn't hit the ghost. Doesn't hit anything. So I go for a low bandit. I knew I could not put the bandit to block the ghost. If I had put the bandit to block the ghost there, I would have lost the tower here because I would have been that much lower. So we go for the battle arm. Unfortunately, the Ewas is on the tower, but we do stop the bandit. And the bandit, the Ewas is going to die after a while. And then the ghost is going to go ahead and kill those barbs before they do too much damage. So we're down three elixir. We're down 2,000 damage on both towers. We're looking not good. But he has to go for the minion so we can just zap those. Plus one trade because I don't have to answer them. He's not going to be able to support them. And we get some of that damage back. So we're not out. We're down, but we are not out. Especially against Pekka Minions. Pekka Minions has a very good matchup in the mirror. Just because, like, you can literally... You'll see in a minute. I'm going to have a really good situation. If my opponent had a Magic Archer, I would have basically won the game later in the game. However, he had Minions, so he almost gets away with something. So, he's going to go for a Ghost right at the double Elixir mark. I was going to go for a P.E.K.K.A. in the back at 102. One of my favorite strategies is to play then. Because when double Elixir hits, you get an extra Elixir generated. Like, it generates an extra Elixir. So, if your opponent is bleeding well, by the time you get to double Elixir then you're going to be looking very good. So I go for a Magic Archer. We're going to get some huge chip damage here. He's going counter push mentality. And this is sketchy here, but the Ewas goes in front. So I'm just going to go for a peck off to the side here. And the tower is now targeting the Ewas. So I go for a battle arm kite. And this is looking okay, but the ghost kills his and walks up and fails my kite. So at this point, I know I'm not stopping that peck. I look at my hand. I had like four elixir and a bandit Ewas. Like I'm not stopping that. So I just go in. I zap the Ewas. I have to ensure I take that tower. I have to ensure I take that tower. So now we go in for the Ewas on the P.E.K.K.A. I go for the Ghost here. The Battle Ram unfortunately connects. And the Bandit's going to get there. So I have to go in for my Battle Ram here. We protect my Ghost, which is important. Because it's going to help get more value. But my tower is now at 1,000 HP. That P.E.K.K.A. took like all of it. And my other tower is at 1,350. And I need to break through with a big push. You might, you're going to be wondering, how the heck do you win this? Like You are definitely screwed here, Jax. And I will say... I'm built different. So we go for a P.E.K.K.A. in the back towards that lane. And he goes in for a bad battle ram here. And a bad P.E.K.K.A. He goes for the P.E.K.K.A. Very interesting here. So this is where I was saying the game turns around right here. Because I go in for a um, ghost with this. And then we're going to pull the P.E.K.K.A. back. And now look. I go for the... Oops. Let me go back. He puts minions here. Look at my hand. I have to fireball those if I want to stop them. So, un unfortunately, I'm just like, okay, well, I have to lose that push. Uh, we do end up killing this bandit, though, and pulling that P.E.K.K.A. all the way back. He has no poison because he just used it. So, we are able to get the ghost onto the tower for just a bit. 
And now we can go in. So I go for a high P.E.K.K.A. Here, he's going to go for the battle ram. I keep hitting two times instead of pause. So I go for a high P.E.K.K.A. here. Look, I have a lot of elixir on the board. The battle ram is not going to get him any value. So we're going to go ghost. We're going to start killing this battle ram very quickly. And then I'm also going to, he's going to go for minions. And I go for the high E.W.A.S. We're going to hit the minions. Now look at this. He's at three elixir. I have a battle ram, or I have a bandit, ghost, and E.W.A.S. With no minions, the minion's about to die. I put a battle ram right here. And now he's going to get in huge trouble we're able to spam him he doesn't have enough for an electro wizard yet battle ram connects onto the tower i go for the zap and then i'm gonna go for the ghost in the pocket or i'm gonna go for the ghost now he goes actually he, i go for the magic archer i'm expecting him to go bandit or something i was expecting minions but we are able to go in for the battle ram to block battle ram's coming in he doesn't have the elixir we take his tower that's how you come back sorry if you can hear my family yelling um, I think everybody just woke up. I'm up a little bit earlier than usual, so um, that's going to be that. So now we're going to go against Mikan Buya here, who's playing Earthquake, probably to counter all the buildings, because this was a very building-heavy meta. Um, sorry, my gameplay looks like it's lagging a little bit. Hopefully that's fixed. I bet it's been lagging quite a bit. That is what happens with this gameplay. I apologize. Trying to get the Elgato to work. I have all the cores. I just need some like adapter, like one last adapter that I didn't know I needed. So... He goes for a bandit in the back. I think I'm Magic Archer here because it's the slower of my Ewas versus, um, uh, what's it called? Um, slower of Ewas versus Magic Archer. I'm brain fart there. My bad, guys. So, um, yeah, that's why I did it. And if he had a fireball, I prefer him to fireball the Magic Archer because the Magic Archer is my fireball bait while the Ewas could actually be useful. So here he goes for the Ghost Up High. I go for my own Ghost just to counter his. Um, and he's gonna go for a really nice snowball here. My ghost doesn't even get another hit. So I'm forced to Ewiz now. And we do get the Ewiz down, but he's gonna go for the bandit. And now my hand's kind of very awkward. So I go in for the battle ram. What? Just gonna counter this bandit. And yeah, so we counter the bandit. We're gonna go for a low magic archer here. I just like doing this because it's very good to counter the archer queen. Like he's gonna have to just let the archer, like he goes, look at that ability. That was a very bad ability. So now we have the ghost, magic archer, and bandit all alive. So I go for the ghost in the other lane. He's just gonna have to ignore something. So I go for a zap on this royal ghost and it doesn't get another hit on the bandit. We're able to get the bandit onto the tower. And look at this magic archer's tanking for the bandit. So he's forced to snowball the bandit. And now he's very low. I know with this snowball that his cycle is bad. He doesn't have any resets. And I didn't know he had a bandit back, but I probably should have guessed because of the Archer Queen. That's the one thing about the Archer Queen. She makes cycle so difficult to read because her cycle, like your opponent's cycle becomes three cards when she's down, so they can cycle really fast. So it's hard to tell what they have in cycle when the Archer Queen has been played. So I didn't know what he had in cycle, but it was still good battle run. We kill the bandit and we get a hit. That's good because now I don't have to kill his bandit with my bandit and can, don't have to like let his ghost block before I can kill it. So he goes for the Earthquake on the Magic Archer, which is not going to kill it. And now he needs still needs to play something towards it. So I go for the Peck in the back. He's going to go for the Rhyme Rider. At this point, I'm expecting him to go for a Mega Knight at the bridge. And I'm also expecting him to go for a pre-snowball. I knew he was going to pre-snowball this and push the battle ram out of the way. I just knew that that was the only like kind of play I had. And it's perfectly fine because we are going to take this guy's tower. He's going to take mine. I'm going to go for a magic archer here. And then we're just going to plop down a P.E.K.K.A. Uh, I was not aware of how this P.E.K.K.A. was going to do, but we do kill the ghost. So, yeah, the P.E.K.K.A. did okay. We're only going to take the Ram Rider charge, and the Archer Queen is right there doing stuff. So, th this is a good matchup. Normally with Lightning, it's a bit more sketchy, but with um, Earthquake, this is a really good matchup. So, he's got an Earthquake Snowball, the Magic Archer, to kill it. This Bandit is going to die to my P.E.K.K.A. unless he protects it. So, I just go for the E was in the back. Oops. Got to make sure to touch the screen. All right, so I go for the Ewas. I go for the Magic Archer. I'm fine putting this Ewas here because I know that my um, I know that my Ewas is not going to cross the bridge. So here we're just going to let the Ewas die. Um, and then I go for the Ghost because I have the Magic Archer up. And he's going to go for the Ram Rider. So I wasn't sure what his plan was here. I was very careful. I kept the Battle Ram in case he went Mega Knight so that I could kite the Mega Knight. Now I go in. I was expecting him to Mega Knight, so I was just going to base race him. But it's going to be fine. He misses literally everything. I don't know what he hit with that Mega Knight. He misses the Battle Ram and the Marcher. So we connect with the um, Battle Ram. And at this point, this is where the game ends. Because look at this. Plop. Another P.E.K.K.A. He just used his Mega Knight. That's why you like pecking the back in these kinds of matchups. Because... Um, 
look at his cycle. He just got another Mega Knight back, and I've like could cycle multiple Pekkas before we can get a Mega Knight, because he can't just put a Mega Knight down immediately. It's just going to die straight up to the Pekka. So now we have the Ghost killing this Bandit. Battle Arm is going to connect. I go for the Bandit. I don't even know what I was going for there, but he's really low on Elixir. I just zapped the tower. Um, no matter what would have happened, I would have 3 crowned him, or I would have won that game. I just fireballed, and that was the game that got us to 8,400. Plus 24 there, so you can see I was antsy to go in again. I was going to set if I got a plus 30. I had to get a plus 24, dude. I had, uh, couldn't have just gotten a plus 30 and known to sit. Uh, I had a few friends tell me it wasn't enough. So that brings us to the torture game, the one against win. So if you guys don't know who, oh, goodness, gameplay. Where is my gameplay at? Oh, it's so laggy. Okay, there it goes. It finally caught up. I, I'm so sorry for that, guys. Um, if you guys don't know who Win is, he's one of the best ladder players of like 2018. Multiple number one finishes, CRL Pro. Uh, he's been playing a lot of different decks, and I just faced him like an hour ago playing this deck and beat him, which is a really difficult matchup. I think this is like 70 30 for Hogs with Skeletons. It's difficult, but it's winnable. They have cracks in their defense. Like, if you can get a, the Bandit, mainly the Bandit, the Bandit being bugged is what makes this such a winnable mat, like, it, winnable at all, because the bandit is going to go in. So, here's a pro tip for you guys. Um, Archer Queen can, like, a reactive Archer Queen ability does not trigger in time. So, if I, like, if you fireball the Archer Queen forward, the bandit dash will kill her, and she's not going to be able to, like, most players know about this at the top now, but most lower Archer Queen players don't know. So, if you face an Archer Queen, fireball her into your bandit, the bandit will kill her if they, they're going to realize once you fireball, oh, I need the ability to protect her. It won't work. The bandit dashes before her ability sets on, and you get a dash spring in the killing the archer queen. So um, I'm going to go for a fireball. I'm aware of that play. Uh, we fire, So we don't end up connecting. We, we do end up fireballing the archer queen. So um, And we do kill the hogs for only a couple hundred damage. Uh, Archer Queen ability, not going to do, only going to kill the E as my ghost is still there and alive. So he's going to have to go for a delivery on the Royal Ghost. And I know at this point I have a slight elixir lead. Goodness, dude, why is my gameplay lagging so bad? Ah! Oh man, I'm so sorry for that, guys. Um, Hopefully my commentary is enough, but I know I have a slight elixir lead after that delivery. So I go for a Battle Ram to block for that Fire Spirit. And um, I'm just going to zap. Because he thought he could get away with that, but I was like, no, 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 sir. I have good reaction time, so... We do end up um, getting a barb shot on tower. We're almost in the damage lead going into single. So that's perfect. So now I go for that trick, knowing he didn't have skeletons or a fire spirit to block, because they can reactively play something like that. I go for the trick. Bad ghost on my end. If he had popped the ability here, I don't think he... I don't know why he didn't pop the ability there. That, because my ghost at the fire spirit, he definitely could have reacted in time. Um, but he's going to go in for some royal hogs. I go for the Ewas here. I don't have anything else in hand. It kind of sucks because um, we hit double, so I can't even battle ram at zero to punish him. So we're going to take a lot of damage, but we do have an elixir lead because he still has to counter the Ewas, and I'm already at 10. So this is really good for us. We haven't taken too much damage. 2,000 damage in single is good. He's going to log the Ewas back. I'm going to go for a battle ram in the opposite lane. We don't want to give his delivery too much value. He's going to go for the cannon. Um, I'm going to try the trick again. This is literally the best thing you have against Archer Queen. Bad bandit there. We do end up losing her, but he goes for hogs for some reason. I don't know why these Royal Hogs players like to do that. If he just waited till the P.E.K.K.A. had died, he basically would have won the game. So we get some damage, but I would go for the high magic archer to kill off the Archer Queen. I just wanted her dead because the beauty thing, beautiful thing is he's not going to be able to cycle two Archer Queens on me. So I can go ahead and counter that with the magic archer knowing that he's not just be able to instantly put another Archer Queen and I'm going to be screwed. So here, one of the most clutch plays I've done in a while Pekka right there at the perfect time is going to target all the pigs in order. So this is the only reason I have a chance because 593, he's going to want to start spell cycling me. So as you can see, spell cycle mentality. So I go for my magic archer. I know he's not going to be, he's used his log, so he can't delivery log. He's going to put another earthquake. He needs to get back to an earthquake. Delivery is going to knock my ram off, but everything is collapsing on the tower. He's got two elixir. He's playing at zero. We have a Pekka down. I zap. Bandit's not going to live. Pekka gets on the tower. And the Earthquake comes down just in time. I would have secured a top 150 finish had I won that game. I was like right at the end of my time to play that for the day. Um, I got some more to play. I was right at the end. Everything was on his tower. I thought it was going to be perfect. But we do unfortunately lose the game. And we lose the top 200 finish. Um, so 
yeah, that really sucks. It really sucks. We get a top 350. I had the presence of mind to not tilt all the way down, but definitely one of the more unfortunate things to happen. Now that makes my first top 200 finish that I've actually secured and tilted. I've had a 211, 240, 280 that I've secured and then tilted, but I've never actually secured a top 200. So sucks, but we got a new high PB. 8,400 trophies is really good. I'm very happy with that. Got the ultimate champion badge, a new best finish, and a lot of improvement, a lot of confidence back with the deck. I thought I couldn't do it after the Archer Queen got released and I threw the season and been doing badly, but we do get the best finish, and that's going to do it for today's video. Sorry for the lag, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something. We'll try and fix the lag. I'm not sure what's causing it, but I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.